Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I hope you enjoyed that package about handwork. Speaking of handwork, we have a young lady whose handwork is journalism, telling stories, representing Nigeria on the international scene, gaining experience that we can implement here to make governance and policy making better for us. Her name is Marianne Duke Okon, and she's a journalist, a broadcaster, and she was privileged and honored to represent Nigeria in an international fellowship, which she will be telling us about in a moment. Thank you for joining us, Marianne. It's good to uh, be here. I mean, it's, it's good to be the interviewee. I know, to be on the other side Usually of Usually you're the one that asks all the questions. I know, but it feels good. Good to have you. Thank you. So tell us about this fellowship. Lately, we're seeing a rise in fellowships. Lots of people are applying to fellowships. How, how was it for you? How did you find out about it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, apparently this is called the International Visitor Leadership Program. Uh, it's put together by the state, U.S. State Department through embassies uh, in the different countries where they are. And you don't apply for this one. You are picked. So what they do is they look for... Um, young women, in my case, who are very outspoken, who are interested in advocacy or, you know, for whatever it is, whether it's for clean air, clean environment, or violence against women, children, you know, all of those kind of things. So uh, one day I was just going to work and I, I had a phone call. First I saw an email and it looked like spam, so I just said, oh, whatever. And then on my way to work, this guy calls me and says, oh, I'm calling from the American embassy. I'm like, oh, these people again. And he goes... Well, you have been picked. When he said IVLP, I was like, what? Like, literally screamed in the Uber. And the Uber guy was like, OK, what's going on? So he said, um, you have one week, and we're taking you to America. It's a three-week program. You have been nominated, and congratulations. Get ready with your passport, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, Look at that. Yeah. So it was at the really end of the day, you just keep doing your best, putting out your best foot forward, you really doing your work because you don't know who's watching. watching. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So now you went to that experience, you, you went through that experience, and there's been a lot that you've learned that I feel that we can implement as well. So yeah. what would you say are some of the key lessons that you picked from that experience? Okay, so just before I answer that, the IVLP program actually has different categories. So you have for men, you have for entrepreneurs, for journalists, for different topics. For this one, it was for women in leadership, politics, and civil society. So obviously, we were going there for women. It was a woman-based program. Um, and so what we were supposed to come back with was helping women, enabling women, women enabling women, creating the enabling environment for other women to try. Because we know that naturally women and women don't work well. When you leave like five women in one space, you know what happens at the end of the day. There's bickering, there's dragging and, you know, kicking. But And thankfully, I think that's starting to change. I don't, <laughs> it's beginning yeah, to it's, change, which is great. Um, so we were talking about gender pay gap. We're talking about violence against women and children, safe spaces for children, the girl child to go to school. We're talking about how women can get more into the political space. Yes, I mean, looking at the percentage under the Jonathan administration, we had the 35 percent, you know, um, in quotes, which wasn't necessarily 35 percent. Right now, it's 18 percent under the Buhari administration, which means we're going down. We used to be better. So we're trying to ask more women questions about why are we not getting more involved in, you know, political spaces? Why are we not, you know, aspiring to be leaders much more? than usual. And most of the women would tell you that they do not get support from their men. Society also is an obstruction of sorts. So you say you want to go for a political office as low as a counselor. Uh, who's taking care of your children? Does your husband know about it? Uh, women that are in politics, they're not, they're very loose women. So all of those things can be a barrier. And you don't also want to um, have to wrestle with that, to be seen as a woman who is going against her husband and also a woman who's trying really sincerely to help the women in her community or society by running for that office. Because you know what, Olive, it's easier for us to sit here and talk about stuff, but it's more difficult to get involved in making a change so that that thing can be different for us. It can benefit everybody. And that's why we're calling for more women. Yes, it's difficult, but then if we band behind one another and say, hey, don't worry, I'll push you, I'll give you one arm, and you know, we'll all just help ourselves to get to where we want to go to. So more women need to speak up. We also hear that there's a gender pay gap, whether we like it or not. Maybe in the civil service, that's different because you know, you're paid um, according to grade level. But in the private space, it's very difficult. And there is this law that you cannot divulge how much you're being paid to the next man. And that's a tactic that these you know, um, private sectors use to limit women. I hear that a lot of women actually are not paid what they are worth even when they're working and doing, putting in as many uh, hours as the men, 
they always promote those men over the women. And so we're trying to speak up, you know, up about these kind of things. Yes. I, I mean, there, there are levels to these things. We hear people who say, oh, I'm not being paid because I'm a, I'm not being paid adequately because I'm a woman. Yes. Some would even say, oh, I'm not being paid adequately because I'm not a married woman. I've heard someone say, whilst negotiating, they said, are you married? Do you have kids? So what mm. responsibilities do you have? And these are really unfortunate situations and scenarios that constantly limit women from being the best that they can be. Yes. From your experiences, what would you say were some of the most common complaints from other people? Was this? I, I believe this is not a problem peculiar to Nigeria. Yes, not, not at all, because we had 20 countries. We had Moldova, we had Tanzania, we had India, Pakistan. I tell you what, um, almost all the women had the same issues, even in countries where women representation is high, like India. India has a great um, amount of women representation. Uh, I think some Latin American countries are getting there now. The women are beginning to take their mother's names as their sworn names just to give the women more ambience. But the, the, I think the unifying um, comment everybody was making was that women were still down there, especially the pay, the gender pay gap. Again, for the issue of violence against women is still on the force, especially for rape. The first question you you get asked is, why were you there? What, what were, were you wearing? wearing? Did you make any, um, you know, gesture that could have Did attracted this? you try to seduce this? him? Exactly. Like the man is not able to have self-control. So even in a state like the U.S., where a country like the U.S., where you would expect that, you know, the laws would be a, lo a lot better, it's difficult to still prove rape at some to some extent. I mean, even between married people, you know, in Nigeria, if you ever raised it, they'll just say, how would a married man rape his wife? But there, you have to consent. It's about two consenting adults. If she doesn't want it, then it's rape. But hey, they'll say we don't too. really make it as much provision for spouses. Exactly. Rape. Like we're not even even rape between people that are not married is even a difficult thing to prove. Yes. People are making yes. jokes about rape yes. on Instagram and making it look like it's okay for people to be raped. Unfortunately, and even the ones that are actually glaring, you know that a girl has been raped. Societal. Problems are also there. So parents say, oh, don't shush it because you know they might not marry you if they hear you were raped. Correct. And so women who have been raped are not able to speak up about it. And they're psychologically drained and damaged and it actually affects their relationships in the future. I'm really excited that you mentioned this because these are some of the things that encourage a rape culture in our country. Let's look at some of the other things that inhibit women. We know that number five on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is gender equality. But unfortunately, some of these actions inadvertently inhibit women and maybe Make it a bit difficult for us to meet up with you mm -hmm. know the UN's SDGs. So let's talk about some of all these myths and all these practices <laughs> that inhibit women. We've mentioned the rape culture, mm -hmm. the fact that you know a person is raped, but because of stigma, mm -hmm. you don't want to speak about rape. Yeah. You don't want people to think you're mad. Mm -hmm. Still talking about being mad. I saw a post on Instagram last week where somebody mentioned the fact that um, she was fired because she said she had a mental health condition. Oh, I, needed I saw to go, that post. I needed yes. to go, you know, check herself. So you hear situations of people saying, oh, don't say that. No man will marry you. Mm -hmm. Don't say that you had bipolar or you had some sort of mental mental health challenge. What would you say are some of the other inhibitions that limit women from achieving their full potential? Well, again, let's not forget that we live in a very patriarchal society where whether we like it or not, we may be paying lip service to the fact that, oh, you know, women, we love women, they are mothers, we celebrate mothers, but when it comes down to it, really, you can't speak up about certain things, even in your family. Well, thank God I'm from a certain part of the country where women have a right to own property, you have a right to sit at the table, if you are the first child in my place, you can actually oversee a lot of things. So if your father, for, for example, dies, God forbid, <laughs> um, you can call a meeting and say, this is what should be done. Um, so inequality in families. So they say, Shh, yeah, we have guests. There's no woman here. Go to the room. It still happens. Even in a family where you think that they're very well read and learned, it's still happening. So women can be leaders. I always say, if you trust me to take care of your children, to keep the home, everything is that good, and I'm a good administrator at home, give me a little more space to do more. So you can see that I have much more sense. I mean... Is it that they would give us these things, or we, will, we would go and collect it? Because so, I don't feel that anybody's going to give anything to so women. So I'm one of the people who advocates against us begging and asking, cap in hand. I, I say, step aside, watch me do my thing. Then you can judge me. Because the truth is... Let's take, for example, journalism. There are lots of women who are at the top of this. We are like at the top of our game, just as good as the men, if not better. 
So, I mean, so if we're good at this, there's so many other things that we're good at. I, f I saw a female carpenter. She's like a graduate, but she's great at what she does. And that's because her father gave her the opportunity. So we need to start from our homes. This is where I come from. Families, what are you letting your girl child do? What are you exposing them to? Don't overshield them. Because we shield them and say, oh, you're a woman, let's protect you. You don't need to be. Expose them, allow them. You know, edge them on. I come from a family where I was allowed to take risk. They, they just every time I said, oh, this is what I wanted to do. Oh, that's fine. Go ahead. Are you sure you want to do this? So we need fathers have to start encouraging their daughters, you know, being their cheerleader. You're great. You're a good woman. You can do this. You can survive. That is where you build up that, you know, mentality. Because a lot of women are suffering from, you know, that whole um, low self-esteem issue. So as much as we're saying we want women to lead, Yes, they might want to leave, but their mindset is also a setback. Hold our thoughts. We'll come back to speak some more about this. And before we wrap up the conversation, what exactly are the things that we can do to ensure that we encourage gender equality? We push ourselves towards achieving this United Nations goal. Welcome back. We're still speaking with Marianne Duke Okon, a journalist, a broadcaster, and a woman who is passionate about empowering and equipping other women. Hence, uh, you know, visits to that fellowship, our wonderful fellowship and the experience that you've gotten from these, this fellowship that you attended. I'm really excited that we're talking about some of these practices mm -hmm. that inhibit women. We're speaking a lot about gender equality. Women are starting to have a lot of, you know, strength and stamina to express themselves. Back in the day, women were just pushed aside to the back burner. Mm -hmm. According to the Gender Gap reports by the World Health Organization, they said it would take about 200 years to bridge the gender gap between men and women. That's a long but time. But hopefully... You know, with more women coming out and showing support for other women and speaking up for women like you're doing, we'll be able to bridge that gap in no time. Well, so we're, we're speaking about some of the harmful practices. You, you yeah. were raising some of the parenting styles and parenting skills. Yes, let's let's yes. dip further into um, that. This is the age-old uh, example where, you know, the girl child is in the kitchen. She's waking up and doing the, you know, the morning chores and the guy is just chilling. And, you know, and as something as simple as taking your own dishes to the kitchen to wash them. You say, eh, it's my sister, eh, she's a girl now. That's because this is what has been fed into his mindset. So he feels like, I don't have any responsibility. It's the girl's responsibility. And he takes that into his marriage. And so his wife cannot go beyond a certain level because, in fact, if she earns too much, he starts reading meaning to every gesture or everything she says. He has an undertone, oh, because you earn more than me, or because you're doing better, or that's why you want to walk all over me. We need to change that mindset. Are there women who do that to their husbands? Yes. But again, it boils down to where they are coming from. They might have been oppressed. They might have seen their mother being walked all over. That's why they're having this reverse action. But we need to start from the cradle. Home. Teach this young men and women. We're always telling the girl how to sit, to do this. What are you teaching don't the men? Don't raise your voice. If you raise your voice, you're aggressive. Exactly. You know, don't argue too much. So nobody what thinks you're aggressive. What are you teaching these men? We All also right. have to teach them side by side because there are men who are feminists who support the women's agenda because they also feel that they have sisters, they have aunties, mothers who are being oppressed. Are you afraid of being tagged feminists? I, I am not necessarily a feminist. I'm a humanist. So treat me the way you want me to be treated. That way we... You know, but the reason why they're feminists is because they really need to have that tag to send the message home. And I don't blame them. It's an amazing idea. Yeah, I, I don't, I, 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 I would say that I misconstrued the idea of feminism yeah. as well before. But the truth is, at the end of the day, if we are pushing for women's rights, we are feminists. One it's just the that other. there are people who, of course, they are extremists that now take it to argue for other things. What mm -hmm. you're doing is really arguing that women should be given an equal chance, an equal opportunity just like the men. Yeah. And I'll, I'll wrap up the conversation by talking about some of these harmful practices in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about bridging the gender gap, uh, the pay gap between men and women. Let's talk about some of the, the harmful <laughs> side comments and actions that a lot of people make in the workplace that they don't realize is negative. I'll give you an example. So two people are having an intellectual argument and someone makes, throw, throws around a comment that, oh, ignore her, she's a woman. So what you're trying to say is a woman is not capable of making an informed argument mm. or she's, because she's upset. You know, there's just an, there's just an expectation that women are angry, you know, yeah, raging mad, like you don't have hostile. a right to express yourself. Mm -hmm. So in the workplace, what would you say are some of the harmful, um, um, sexist traits, you know, that a lot of people throw around? Yeah, one is just what you have said. Um, I had a friend who was a manager and she was given a driver, assigned a driver who was an elderly man. And the man said he was not going to drive her because she's a little girl. Yeah. And so she fired him. He said, okay. And he said, I have your mate at home. So I can't drive you. So he would rather drive an older man. If he were a younger man, he, he would wouldn't probably mind. not he have would call a problem. Her yes. So 
she said, okay, I'll fire you, so go home. That person that you have, like me at home, can cater to your needs. So there are these kind of things. And also, if a younger lady who is well-read and then is brought from some place and has more qualifications to become a manager in a company, and then she has to sit over people who are older, they tend not to listen to her because, one, she's a woman, and then she's younger. So they don't feel that she's intelligent or has the prowess to be able to lead in that office. So these are some of the things that... But men, men and the whole world need to start seeing that the woman is here to partner with you. She's not here to take your place. She's just here to support you. We're support systems. We're supposed to create a synergy to build a better society for one another. And if we keep making it look like it's a fight against between Who's women and... The exactly, because the, the man says... When, the moment you start talking about women empowerment, they say, ah, these women, that they, they, don't, they want to be ahead of their husbands. They want you know? to be men. You know, so... We don't we want don't. to be men. We love being women. I would, I would come back five times to this world as a woman. So I, I think that the men need to begin to understand the women. And the women as well. The women also need to understand themselves. I tell you what, the greatest problem... I'm, I'm grateful you reminded me. The greatest problem that women have is women. Until we begin to see each other as sisters, as building blocks, without you, I can't go forward. We will not be able to solve this problem. Women are always constantly fighting with women. Women are always constantly trying to drag women down, cat fights here and there. We need to start supporting one another because you don't know who you would need, you know, to get to that place that you want to get to. At the end of the day, we want the whole world to be a better place. And we can't have a better place if we don't have a peaceful coexistence between the men and the women, equal opportunities. If you're having men in politics, we want to see women in politics as well. We don't want them to say, oh, you know, since we have 107 men in the <laughs> house, let's just give eight seats to a woman. No. There are women, and we're not saying that we're throwing around the feminist card or the woman card. Mm -mm. Give a woman who can do the job, because yes. there are women that can do the and job. Lots of qualified no. women out And there. women also need to put themselves forward a lot more. Not, it's not just saying... We need to conquer that fear exactly. of what will people say. Yeah. Put yourself out there as well. Be involved. Ask questions. Ask difficult questions. There are levels to this gender inequality thing. First of all, being a woman. Secondly, being an unmarried woman. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is a conversation that spins up beyond today. Mm -hmm. But as much as you can, you that is watching me at home, please ensure that you teach your children how to treat other people with kindness. Let's learn to understand that we're all equal. You know, we have our, we are entitled to equal opportunities. And let's not just try to make sure that one is overshadowing the other. We're not trying to take the space of life. Mm -mm. Which is why I'll be having a man, a good-looking, talented, man up next as my guest but thank you so much for joining us Marianne. thank you so much for having how me. can people follow this. you up on social media uh well on twitter uh i'm mimi ayo that's m-i-m-i-e-y-o and on instagram same thing all right follow up with mimi ayo keep up to date with all that she's doing and please support the the struggle because it is still a struggle to make the world a better place for women particularly nigeria so that we meet up with this united nations sdg to enjoy more of this our Ubunke videos when you just watch Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.